Hello there, folks. It's uh, RatDog88 here. I know it's been a while. Uh, haven't really had any time and or desire to record anything. But I've been really getting into the historical Total War game, so specifically some mods. So s I thought I would start up a new Let's Play series uh, with stainless steel, and specifically the stainless steel historically historical improvement project subbot. Um, this is the latest version, 0.98, so it's getting fairly close to um, actual release. It's still technically in. Uh, beta, alpha, early access, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is for Total War Medieval 2. Uh, stainless Steel being one of the most popular Medieval 2 mods, and it was a very harsh mod, very hard difficulty mod, and the Historical Improvement Project sub-mod makes it a little bit more hardcore and a lot more historically accurate. Um, I've played a bit of the stainless steel regular mod and a bit of the stainless steel historically improvement mod. Um, and I have not done well in any of them, but I have enjoyed my time in them, so I thought I would record some. Um, so this may or may not be a long let's play. Um, it depends on how well I do. Uh, we are going to start up here. We're going to go early era campaign. And as you can see, this is the map with the ship mod. Uh, they have uh, enlarged the, the map from vanilla Total War Medieval 2. And I believe even regular stainless steel, it's been uh, enlarged. You can see a whole bunch of factions. Um, you know, you have your your Kingdom of England, but they are uh, Latin names, I want to say. In some cases, they are, again, more historical. Uh, you have the Kingdom of France, the Holy Roman Empire, uh, the Byzantine Empire, Castile, you have Denmark, Venice... Um, Ru Rus or Russia. Um, for this Let's Play, we're actually going to be playing the Republic of Novgorod. Uh, it is in this time period, um, on par with Venice and Genoa as like a mercantile powerhouse. Um, as in this mod, it should be more evident in the history 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 of the time. So, originally a Baltic town, Novgorod came under Varingian control when the semen legendary Varingian Ruik was invited to be their leader. Novgorod used to be the most important city of the Rus until Ruik's successor Oleg captured Kiev and founded the state of the Kievian Rus. While still technically part of the Kievian Rus, Novgorod has been growing more and more independent from power of the Kievian throne, as dis disputes over the right to rule th Kiev threaten to engulf Rus. Novgorod's strength comes from its importance as a rich center of trade. Situated astride the river Volkhev, Novgorod is the gateway to the river trade routes from the Baltic to Constantinople and beyond. However, this strength also makes Novgorod a tempting target for the city's neighbors. You will have to contend with threats on all, on all sides to survive. From the east, you will face the Cumans, long foes of the Rus. These masters of the Sep are being pushed westward into Rus lands by an even greater power. From the west, the Catholic powers of the Baltic are also eyeing off Novgorod's lucrative trade routes, and if you are not careful, they will use the excuse of a crusade to achieve this goal. Between the Catholics of Novgorod lies pagan Lithuania, squeezed between two different Christian faiths. These adheres to the old ways that will defend themselves if their way of life comes under threat. To the south of your lands, uh, to the south lies the lands of your Rus brothers, Kiev Rus. While not an immediate threat, Novgorod's growing independence may cause the Kievan ru rulers to act to safeguard their income from Novgorod's trade. Only by dealing with all these threats can Novgorod truly become a Gospodian Veliki Novgorod, 
Lord Novgorod the Great. Now, we're going to be doing uh, a long campaign default. We're going to be doing uh, medium, medium. The battles aren't too bad. The campaign difficulty is brutal. Um, again, if I get more experience with the mod, then we may be dumping, dumping, pumping that up uh, to higher difficulties. So we're going to hit start here. Now, I probably butchered a whole bunch of p pronunciation in that. Um, I am not a, a native Russian speaker. So, I will try my best, but, uh, yeah, probably not going to be pronouncing things very well. If you guys could give me some tips on some of that, that would be appreciated. Um, otherwise, we will try our best. Um, uh, uh, the, I should say, the .98 um, patch... Uh, it's technically not on ModDB. You have to get it from the actual uh, Total War Center forums, the old school way. Um, point nine seven is on ModDB, and for me, it was very unstable, almost to the point of being unplayable. But since I've upgraded to point nine eight, uh, it has been very much stable. Uh, loading times are a little bit um, more extreme in point nine eight, though. So, every turn for a long time, we will be getting some descriptions on how the mod works. The ship is meant to be a difficult mod. Little money, aggressive AI factions, high unrest and sentiments, problems with loyalties of general, generals, bad reputation of expanding too quickly, and many other special challenges to the player. At uh, higher campaign difficulties, there are new mechanics that may be difficult to understand and use efficiently without reading explanations. These new aspects of the mod, and also some of the old game engine features, will be explained in the information when it was popping up like this one. Which is what I basically just explained. Uh, we are doing the campaign difficulty on normal, and we are going to get going. Um, I will try to explain the best that I can, some of the new mod uh, mechanics, but um, the pop-up windows do a very good job of explaining that, so I may be switching back and forth on that. Some of that. So here we have our Novgorod Republic. We start with two sentiments, Novgorod itself and Pliskov. Um, we start yes. with two yes, armies well. out in the field and two armies in one of each of our cities. Now, you can see that Eastern Crossbow Militia, okay, pretty standard. Junior Militia, okay, you know, pretty standard. Standard stuff. Uh, we have Senior Militia, which is Junior Militia, but better. Now, you have, you know, all of your abilities. You have a description here, and these descriptions are historically accurate from most units, especially the spa faction specific units. But you also get a quality and a type. So the senior militia is obviously militia, and it's urban militia, so it's reduced in fields. So they're better in siege battles. Um, we, you have the junior militia, which is a peasant militia, but it's still urban militia. Uh, you have the Slavic levy archers, which are peasant quality and rule levy, so they lack formal military training, poor discipline, and morale. So it's pretty in-depth there. Yes. Uh, you have the mounted senior militia. Militia, urban militia, so on and so forth. Um, where is our... I believe we... Uh, I guess we... Okay, Order here we go. My Lord. Um, so we have woodsmen, militia, local. Okay. These are non-shielded, but uh, still militia. We have our chuddy which I believe are region-specific, not faction-specific. So they don't have uh, a quality type here, but they are a little bit more sturdy than the militia. Um, and here you can see our first historical description. Warriors from a different tribes called Chuddy by the Bruce. They go to war with Nias armed with javelins, axes, and small shields. The wealthier ones can sometimes afford male and even heavier armor, but their infantry is still considered light and would be hard-pressed to stand against real professional troops in the open. And then we have our Slavic Axemen, which again, 
no uh, quality type. And then we have our first, what I would consider the Novgorodian um, unit, the Juhizna Cavalry. So you can see our quality is superior and our type is early professional. There are different eras um, of units, I believe. I haven't gotten too far in the mod. So there's early, middle, and late, I believe. Um, but Juhiznas are left over from Viking times, and their ancestry is evident in their wicked axes they carry. They serve as bodyguards for the leader or, or nobleman. However, Druzniks are free to leave and join other Druznas, Juhinas, if, if they wish to. On the battlefield, they fight as effective heavy cavalry. And you can see quite a bit better than even My Lord. our Chuddy here. And they are also cav versus uh, infantry. So, uh, we have the trait system completely overhauled. Um, the leader's rule is not fully legitimate, legitimate in the eyes of his subject because he does not own all his lands his ancestors control. Or at least they think they did. So we are uncrowned. Uh, if we go to our family tree here, we go to our Prince of Novgorod, our faction leader, Look at all these traits. We'll tr go to uncrown. This man's rule is far from a sure thing. To become a true leader, he must get crowned. To achieve this, he needs to conquer all the lands his ancestors claim to rule. See the map. He should have the authority and piety of six, piety of six or more. He should not be either a regent or viewed as a usurper, and he should be physically and mentally fit. Currently, the stability of a realm is in danger. Generals lose loyalty quickly when they are further away from the capital, and usurpers are likely to appear. Furthermore, the unrest in all settlements has increased. So if we go to our map here, these are all the lands that our ancestors claim that we need to conquer in order to be legitimate in the eyes of pretty much the world. Um, we'll go back to our uh, faction leader, not yes. our heir. There's our spy. Yes, and our heir again, yes. regular general. Yes, okay, faction heir. They're faction leader. So we are dutifully religious, military minded, talent for command, good with cavalry. What are all these traits? They're different than normal. So there is a learning system. And the more you stay in specific towns, the different traits you get. So if you you stay in a castle, you get more military traits. If you stay in a town, you get more administration traits. Also, your age affects it, um, and your aptitude. So if we go, we are normal intelligence, and we are plain. Plain has an effect on, I believe, marriage and stuff. We are founder of a royal dynasty. We have merchant skills, understand logistics, talent for command, military minded. All these things will get be getting explained. So I'm gonna close that real quick. Look at our empire again. So as I said, we have the two cities, the four armies. Um, we have a merchant over here next to our allies, Rus. We have our spy down Sight. here, and we have a bishop Tell over me, here. Sir. We are Orthodox religion, and we have pagan influences, a little bit of Catholic influences. So as you can see, our we're 79% Orthodox here, 70 here. So we're, we need to bump that of up just a bit, so we're going to bring Reaching him back. That is a uh, rebel fort there. Um, and we have another merchant over here. This is our Ready to real money-making merchant. This is 932 Florence per turn. This guy is making Ready to trade. 311 Florence per turn. So you can see our our trade um, earnings are really, really good. Um, uh, our finances, as you can see, we have a large army upkeep. You do have a king's purse, some corruption, we're getting some income. Um, but yeah, 
We are making quite a bit of money, but we're also not really making any actual profits. That's kind of how this mod goes. Um, so what we're going to do is we're my actually going to combine these two of armies. Joining forces. Um, in our settlement details here, you can see our population is pretty good, but we do have a lot of squalor. We don't really need a garrison here, but it will still help uh, maintain public order. So we're going to keep the three units that we have in the army here currently, I believe. Do we want to... What's this? Yes, thing? Lord. Okay, we have one archer unit. So I think what we're going to do Order's is we're actually going to take the, well, the bowman there. Our public groups. order is still good here, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, income is pretty good. Orthodox religion, you can see we are in the majority, but we do have some heretics. Decent amount of pagans. Even a little bit of Islam and Catholicism. Um, so recruitment, you can see we have a large pool of recruits. But, if you go to this, you can see the upkeep is 365. If you go back here, we're only making a profit of 154. So we really can't recruit any any units at the moment. What we can do is we do have a decent pool of flat money. So what we can do is do some construction, right? 20 turns, 800 florins for some roads. Whoo! Not, uh... And you only get 20 or 200 extra income. And roads and trades, obviously. But, again, this, this mod is all about realism. It takes a long time to actually construct roads in this day and age. So, 20 turns and a lot of money. Makes complete sense. Mare grounds, a little bit less. Five turns, still a lot of money. Library, six turns, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, the Lava here is, I believe, our, yeah, one of our uh, religious buildings. We do have quarries, which are mines. Construction cross decrease. 3%, good. More for trade goods. Population growth. Income, all good stuff. But what we're going to do actually first is we're going to go to Pleskov here. We're going to check them out. So this is a town. Is our other one a town? Novgorod is a town, right? I believe that is true. So here, farms. Again, 20 turns. Makes complete sense from a historic or from a realistic point of view can't just clear land that's cutting down trees, plowing fields, that sort of thing. It takes a long time. It is fairly cheap, though. Uh, tanner, fairly cheap. Brothel, you know, always, brothels are always cheap. Wells, a monastic enclosure. Warden Castle. So these are all pretty expensive, but not nearly as expensive as our capital, because it's our capital, and it's a higher tier of city. So what we're going to do is we are going to queue up some construction here. I think we are going to plop down the money for some quarries because population growth, trade goods, we are trading and just some flat income. Also helps construct buildings first. Yeah, it's expensive, but I think it's going to be good. Eight turns, that's really expensive in terms of term or er, turns. And here um, our settlement details. We are barely growing. Our orthodoxy is better. We do have a large garrison. That's pretty much our only public order um, buff that we're getting. Everything else is it's pretty rough. Um, we could do brothel for 5% because uh, we're losing 5%, but we gain 10 lose some income. We do get some spies. Might not be a bad idea. The well is just 5%. Public health, 50 florins a turn. Okay, monastic enclosure. We did have some civil unrest. So we do have at least 50 orthodoxy, so 5% there. Um, I'm thinking one of these two. Let's go wells just because it's quicker. And um, we didn't take a look at some of our other characters here. So this is our governor. Military-minded, accomplished engineer, promising commander, intelligent of no Gordian blood, plain, naturally robust. Pretty good, and he's pretty young. Our yes. uh, heir here, 50, so pretty old heir. He is... 
Now he's married to a keep chick, keep chick. Don't know what that is, but an Uzbek. Okay. And then our general here, our good general, military-minded. He's a genius, but he's also very old. That is unfortunate. Okay. So where's our spy? Yes. Now I have. St played a couple turns as Novgorod, so I know the general area around here. So I do know over here, Moving quietly. there's another Until rebel town of Pl Platosk. Um, if you, if we check in here, can't see much right now. Got some chuddies, some junior militia, javelin men hunters, okay. Obviously, once we get closer with the spy, we'll have better Intel. Um, we do have one more thing. We have our princess Your here, Majesty. who also acts as a diplomat. So we are going to go down to Rus. I shall ride on tomorrow, my lord. See what we can do there. We already have a trade agreement with them, but maybe we can get some map information or something like that. Um, yeah, I think that is turn one. Uh, we do have another independent Easy, army the here. Fight you wish. So that's a pretty big army in the field there, uh, rebel army. So we'll have to deal with that before we probably siege Potosk here. Um, yeah, I guess we're going to end our first turn. Uh, end turns in this aren't too bad um, for how big of an overhaul mod this is. Um, the end turns in .97 are what were causing me a ton of issues. Um, it was like every other turn, I'd get a crash. Different factions would crash me. It was, like I said, almost unplayable. But since I've upgraded to .98, um, I have been pretty stable. Uh, .98 does just improve a whole bunch of stability. It updated some unit cards. Uh, I think it changed some of the ways the factions earn some money. Um, so yeah, just good stuff overhaul. Or overall, so yeah. Uh, so here's another one of our information cards. Soldiers serve for money. If your treasury runs empty, most of the sell swords will abandon you. Makes sense. Uh, turn before your mercenaries disband. You will see a warning. It's good. You have to get out of the red immediately. Yeah. Bottom line: given that there are often unforeseeable additional expenses, i.e., weddings, adoptions, funerals, always have a few thousand sitting in your treasury. Yep, makes sense. Uh, we are 15th in finances. Uh, Const Constantinople, Byzantine Empire is basically number one in everything. Uh, faction announcements. The following events have taken place. Lots of traits. Uh, so we are attending courts. We are office grantor. These things will be explained in a bit. Um, our retinue expands. We get a boost to authority, piety, chivalry, and 30% income to trade. Fantastic. That is on our faction air. Uh, this is, I believe, our governor in Plaskov. Uh, more trade income there. Awesome. Uh, so I lost sight. sight of where the rebel army went. Moving into position. Moving ah, forward. there it is. Okay. So first of all, we'll yes, bring more. our army down here. Move out. Yes. We will see. Moving. We got here. Battle will resolve our differences. Okay, we got if it is of fight militia, you his come name, cavalry, two woodsmen units, two chuddies, javelinmen, hunters, and Ruthenian archers. Okay, that's a pretty, it's a pretty beefy army actually. I mean, we've seen Drahisnians, we have some junior woodsmen, your light infantry uh, non-armored guys for the most part, but they do have some defensive skills, so they're a little bit harder to hit at least. Chuddies, javelin men, hunters, Ruthenian archers, their average quality. Interesting. Okay. So we're going to move on to Wizard Princess. An honor, Prince my lord. down again. Traveling. Uh, our house, our income. Our, so we did get a little bit more income because we did get a 30% boost to two of our uh, governors here. And both of our governors are the ones who got that. 
me take a sip of coffee here. Ah, good stuff. Okay, so our retinue, Do Novgard Didius. Don't know. Uh, okay. So, fit for office, office granter. Though, like I said, those two will get explained. Attending court, also get explained. We do have refined dem dem diplomatic skills. Okay. So... I have to decide, after I take this army out, do I want to go up to this rebel or this rebel? Um, probably this rebel, because Rus is potential to take them out, and we also have Lithuania over here. And I believe all three of us actually claim this province in our ancestral lands for our um, crowned, uncrowned stuff, so I have to probably deal with them first, so I think I'm going to take this army out in the field and then go after that. I think that's what we're going to do. So we're going to end turn here. Okay, I thought I had a crash there. I did not. Lithuania's coming for a visit. I am I believe that's probably just a diplomat. Um, I should also say that diplomats, depending on your These faction, woods provide a perfect ambush site. Lord. Uh, we'll get to you in a second. Uh, different names. So we have a suitable prince for our princess. Age forty. Plain, married into the family, so minus authority. Schooled. Tax income, trade income. Generally loyal, promising commander. Okay. The problem here is if we accept him, we don't have a diplomat anymore. So we're going to minimize that for a second. We got a mission. What do we got? Uh, send an emissary to Lit Lithuania. Well, we're down in Rus right now. Uh, we did get some money from the believers. The loyal bishops of the Orkside Church and rich elders of the cities have collected funds. So this is one of the things that got added to certain factions. I've played as a couple. Some of them get them, some of them don't. Where you just get a little bit of boosted income until you start getting some um, cities. Okay, so... I think what we're going to do... What do you require of me? Is we're going to talk yes. to Russia. Oh, we're going to at least try to trade people. some map information. Good stuff, okay? And like I said, we do have trade Excellent. routes, we do have military access, we are allies, so we don't really need to do anything Goodbye. else. But you can see Rus Russia has got a lot of landmass around us, so we definitely, and we do claim most of this, so eventually we are going to come to blows. Uh, end of turn report, we did go up a little bit, good, so we got 2,000 Florings from the event. We did get a new family member, so we had a baby. Uh, we got some military training for Gavril. Who is Gavril? Ah, Orders, you're Gavril. Okay. Our wells are done. Information. Some wars in Iberia. Okay, so let's take a look at our family tree here. So we had a baby from our our uh, faction heir, actually, not even our heir heir. Okay, so this is who. Yeah, this is who would be getting married. It would be our niece. Okay, let's take another look at this guy. So he's pretty loyal, he's got a pipping command, and he's pretty pious. Um, sure. Marriage celebrations! Yay, we did lose the 2,000 florins that we got from our um, event. Trade increase. Received 200 as a dowry. 
or the general specifically, which is this guy, right? Yes. So he's sitting in Plaskov. Um, I should say that in this mod, while you can still separate individual units from their armies, they actually increase your financial upkeep for those units if they don't have a general with them. So you, unless you can get into a town or into an army in one turn, or you have a ton of income, it's generally best not to have just normal units out without a general. So keep that in mind. Oh, we forgot God to move sake. our bishop from earlier. Our orthodoxy has gone down in Pleskov a little bit and really down in Novgorod. So we're going to go to Novgorod. Uh, we did lose Sire. lose that army Move again. Quietly. Where, do Moving we just siege the city then? Moving quietly. I hope we don't get ambushed yeah. from them. I think we do. Marching to battle with pride, Lord. It's uh yes. Surrounding and besieging the siege for a little bit. The siege is ongoing, um, my lord. Um. So yeah, we don't have a diplomat anymore, which is unfortunate. Uh. Ah uh, yes, our wells got done. What can we do? So. We did get a. Uh, I think it was this, the public order for the well, right? Public health bonus, yep. So that gave us that. So our public order here, still, we have to keep the garrison because like 50% of our public order is coming from our garrison right now. So we have to do that. So we still need to boost our garrison up a bit. Um, We could build this stuff, but we're would be basically running out of our financial income at the bottom, so if something pops up, we wouldn't be able to do it. So I think we're going to sit on this for a turn. That's still building. Got six turns left. Good, good. Uh, yeah, we're going to end turn again. Um, hopefully we'll get a battle in this episode, but if not, uh, we will hopefully get it in next episode. I am going to be aiming for around 30 minutes, 40 minutes per episode, depending on battles and so on and so forth. Uh, this first one may be a little bit longer, just because I'm explaining the mod a little bit, so we may be going for, I don't know, 40 minutes, 50 minutes, an hour. Ah, the army did come over. Okay. So that is a lot of forces here. That is unfortunate. Um, okay, it's one cavalry, two, three archers, that one. This guy has basically the same. I think we are going. Oh, mm. uh, what to do, what to do, what to do. They outnumber us two to one. We do have two generals in the cavalry, so we have three units of cavalry. Can we hold the line and do some flanking stuff with our cat? Or four, four things of calf. Can we do this, or do we wait? Hmm. You know, I think we're gonna play it safe. We are draw. losing this day. We must retreat. We stand down, men. Break now the, the issue here is they are not going to move from that location, so we're going to have to fight that whole army at some point. Um, so here's our first uh, historical event. Just some flavor and stuff that has happened in history. Uh, the people of Aleppo have suffered terribly at the, as the very earth beneath the city and surrounding lands buckled and broke in what could only be described as a terrible act of divine wrath or punishment. Charmers were felt all throughout. After such a chasm cataclysmic event, Aleppo will take many years to fully recover. Uh, we do have a bride for Oleg 
Trigovsky. Oleg Trigovsky. Uh, importance of financial reserves. Yep. Always keep a few thousand coins in your treasury. Yep. Uh, you may be marriage is a thousand. Offer to guild two to five thousand. Pirates may threaten a little ancillaries. Plague. Yep. Uh, the Pankratov Mon Monastery. And in 1118, at the behest of the Eastern Roman Empress Irania, the Pan Pantocrator Christ on Bloody Monastery was founded in Constantinople. After years of masonry works and adding many extensions in 1136, a south courtyard and an enerex were added to the complex. Within the walls of the monastery lies the most beautiful church of the polis, richly decorated with mosaics and rare, rare marbles, a hospital, and a mausoleum dedicated to St. Michael the Archangel, where many of the great emperors will be laid to rest. In-game, from now on, all Orthodox directions will be able to build the, the huge cathedrals in the city. This translates into faster learning for generals, who will be available earlier for service. Money of the believers. We got more money. Um, okay, so... Who was this for? Oleg Chern Chernovsky. Oleg Chernovsky must be down here. Yes, Lord. No. Ah, our nephew, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, our nephew. Okay. Hmm, we went to war. Portugal with the Caliphate in Iberia. Some truces. So we have to. Okay, Order we have to decide what we're going to do here. We also have to decide what we're going to do here. Yeah, we'll get him married. That's fine. Marriage. Marriage. Um. So. We attack. We have the same odds as before. Do we go up to this one and come back to this now? Or do we try to fight this giant battle will resolve this our giant differences. army? Yes. Ah I'm yes. not feeling comfortable with that, so I think we're gonna moving into position. We're gonna pull one eighty and go up to the of other uh, town up here. I think that's it's the correct play. Okay, so it's a good thing we didn't build any of this stuff, but now we can. As our religious... We do have some religious unrest for public order. Um, sure, we'll get the monastic enclosure. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to do that mission. Yeah, probably not. Okay, we're going to end the turn. Um... Yeah, I just I, I don't think we can I can take that that big because again battles are the AI and ship is definitely improved in the battles so we're gonna be relying heavily on our cav just don't have a lot of holding units and they do ah uh, I don't think I could do it guys don't think I could do it not confident in my battle skills in this mod yet. All right, military matters. So this is some of the actual new mechanics. Commander should fight personally in battles. If a general is the commander of your forces in battle and he does not enter the fray, then he will likely develop nasty traits such as cowardice. As such, you will need to risk his life from time to time to ensure that he will not turn into a bad commander. Makes sense. Pretty realistic. For any general, even an administratively minded one, it is always useful for him to have at least some military experience. Even a small battle against re battle rebels count. With such experience, the general will fare much better in times of necessity. For instance, a general besieged by rebels is likely to develop bad traits if he has had no prior experience. Note that at the beginning of the campaign, most factions will not have access to many of their units. These units will become available only later in the game when certain historical events which trigger them have occurred. For example, the Polish medium cavalry unit, Protowi, will appear only after development of heavy mail, circa 1200-ish. Governors. Young generals need to go to school, as education is one of the most important factors in gaining skills later in life. Teenagers should be sent to a castle or settlement with
at some school for pagans, a temple, and they should stay there without traveling. After some time, these young generals will gain at least a basic education, which will prevent them from sliding into ignorance and developing negative traits. Administratively minded generals would benefit by staying in settlements, i.e. spending whole turns there, which will allow them to gain traits useful for future governors. Some traits may be acquired from visiting a settlement, ending the turn there, or staying or visiting a castle. However, to become a truly good governor, it is best to task a general with governance of a well-developed city with a diversity of buildings. This will also create an opportunity for generals to acquire some negative traits as well, but there, in general, the benefits will outweigh the risks. Generals with a trait scholar will be able to develop the best traits, and such men are rare gems indeed. They learn faster, learn more, uh, and after their schooling has been completed. Thus, they can attain the highest levels of education and add significantly to your income. They can also find valuable books in the libraries of your cities. These books can be passed on to other generals, making such scholars a benefit to all. Unfortunately, scholars can only be born into a family, and their occurrence is rare. Yep. More money. We only gained, uh, I think, a thousand from that one. More truces. Wow. Okay, so declared war in one turn. Truce in the next. Okay. Sire. Okay. Move up here. How's this? Look? Much easier armory. Couple chord ch ch chuddy that we know, and some hunters. Yes, Lord. We're gonna try to get a battle lead Men, in this episode, march. but we'll uh, we'll have to see. How is How our, I yeah, orthodoxy's still going down, unfortunately. Um, how's our? Yeah, we're actually projected negative next turn. Uh, that's not good. Why is that? Army upkeep went up. Right, because we got another general. Okay. Well, that's not good. Hopefully we get some more, uh... Some more money! From believers. If not, this is gonna be a really short campaign. Alrighty. Steel, Hungry, Aragorn, Lithuania. Come talk to me. No? Okay, that was a merchant that came by. It wasn't an actual dip from that. That is unfortunate. Impending debt. Yep. Architects of the world. Fantastic modders. You guys have made a fantastic mod. Really been enjoying it. Great stuff. Great stuff. A cost of a kingdom. In the ship, most of unforeseen expenses are coming from turn are shown in the financial panel. Yep. Uh, unlisted expenses are as follows. Cost of a new general who just came of age was adopted, married, or recruited, reflecting the need to grant him a fife or similar assets, a thousand florins, with an additional two thousand florins if he married a princess, which is why we lost money. Gotcha. Cost of a new faction leader ascending to the throne after the death of, of a previous one, reflecting the cost of a royal funeral. Granting the offices and court, donations to allies, bribing foes, donations to clergy. They are scaled up with the size of the realm from 5 to 10 provinces, 11 or more. Mm -hmm. New faction heir, same thing. Joining a crusade, upkeep of the crown. Yep, okay. More money from the believers. Great. Soldier training for Naz Naz Nazladik Nazladik Lazlanik Sir Toslav. I, I I'm well aware that I butchered that. Uh, who is that? Uh, over here. Yes. Oh, that's a spy. Orders, my lord. Him, our heir. I see. Okay, we are. That's our success. Not very good to infiltrate, so we'll just Move stay outside. Away. Oh yeah, that's that's easy stuff there. Yes, so we're Lord. going to siege them. Yes, Lord. Confronting the enemy. And hopefully, settlement. we can Shall do we that battle now, next turn. My Lord. Okay, so what's our profits look like? We are projected profit. No, we're still losing. Mm -hmm. 
interesting, interesting, interesting. Guess we'll do another end turn. Take another sip of coffee here. Ah, good stuff. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully I can get this battle in this episode. Should be pretty simple. And then we can start building up and hopefully go for the other rebels to the south of us. Work on the mod continues. Yeah, quite fleshed out, I'd say so. It does contain some bugs, prompted crashes, which was more prevalent in, like I said, uh, 0.97 than 0.98. Some factions are very weak financially. Yeah, just working. More money from believers. Great. New family member and our faction leader got a social drinker. Cool. So who would we get on our family? We got a daughter. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Alright. Um, anything I want to do before... Got two turns left on that, bef and one turn on that before I start our first battle. I don't think so. Orders, my lord. Marching to battle with pride, lord. Uh, one second. The siege is on. Yes. Let's take another Can't look at these. Sire. Army. So woodsman, three chuddy, and three hunters. Pretty simple. Yes. All right. Yes, lord. Our first the assault. Enemy. Now, AI in medieval is better. Siege AI specifically is generally better than most games, but it still is a little wonky. Um, we do out outnumber them slightly. We have chosen the field. So now let the battle begin. Um, they might get stuck in the, the city or the gate. They, that tends to happen just in the in the general. So, loading time into battle is actually pretty pretty good for the mod. Uh, I think we are going to start deployment. Are we going to get a general speech? Doesn't look like it. Let me take a look at some of these units though, because a lot of work has been done on unit detail. So, our general bodyguard. Looks amazing. Really good stuff. Our Juhizna cavalry, our heavy cav. I mean, just for for how old this game is, these units look amazing. They did a really good job. Senior militia. Our Slavic archers remind me uh, a lot of the peasants in something like Mountain Blade Warband, if you guys have ever played that. Uh, our Chuddy. Junior militia with their blue uniforms for the most part. Unit diversity is pretty good. I mean, not everybody looks the same. Our leader right there, probably. Our ch some more chuddy. Where is our senior? And there's our crossbowmen. A little bit heavier. Got some leather armor going. Axemen. Oh. Oh, yes. Good stuff. Woodsmen. Alright. So, first of all, we are going to drop these rams because we don't necessarily want uh, let's look at our at uh, we did look at our axemen right 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 uh, so yeah we dropped that who do we want on the rams um our woodsmen are probably good to stay on the ram there yep. um our axemen are our real heavy hitters uh, don't really want... Uh, I don't think we're going to need any more than one ram, so I think what we're actually going to do is 
just do that. Going to group up those guys and these guys and our cav. Uh, yep. Put them here. Cav, go over here. Our axeman here. Uh, yeah, I think that's uh, that's gonna be good. I'm gonna go straight for the gate, and mm, we are getting a little arrow fire them up. Move them. I don't think our cab is really going to be doing much here. The, uh, is it the tower shooting us? Yeah, I think it's the tower shooting us. Yeah, because their hunters are back here. They're too far off. Oh, so good looking. Good stuff. Speed up a little bit here. Our woodsmen are getting decimated by those hunters now. Going to try to pelt them. These guys up. And yeah, their hunters are doing a number on us right now. Come on. Come on. There you go. Our men have reached the gate with the battering ram. My guys firing yet? I'm nope, still getting into position. Maybe I sh is there another gate? Maybe I should have actually. Yeah, I might have needed to do two gates here. Might get bogged down. They are firing. They are doing a better number on us than we are on them, though. Definitely. Our uh, really heavy hitting actions are kind of getting decimated right now. And their hunters are just unloading on us. Crossbow militia. Our men have done well. Nice. The gates have fallen. Okay, let's get in there with them. Run, 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 run. Run, run, run. Still fiery. My cab aren't really going to be doing much. Big old traffic jam. Not really doing much. Yeah, I probably should have gone for an another entry point. It's okay. The woodsmen are getting absolutely crushed. We did. There, they are pulling back. It's 
stuck here? What's going on? Yeah, it looks like we got stuck in there. Too many units. Let's get our Axemen coming in now. Yeah, just getting torn apart out here. We did get through the gate. Pile some more guys in here. The Lord is with us today. We have captured the enemy's walls. Good. The lone banner guy just right in there. Up against our chuddy. Did we break one? No, nope, not yet. So it looks like their archers have switched off of our archers, which is good for us. How are we doing here? We have evened up the percentage of killed. That's good. We got, nope, we, they gate, got the gateway back. Come on, guys. Push through. Now, good news is we still have our cavern reserve. So, we should be alright since we've evened up the the losses here. They're just piling in on us now. Come on, Axemen. Need to be like a knife through butter here. They are, our archers are actually killing quite a few of them now. We are Kind of moving around. That's good. And we have overtaken their them in kills, which is good to see. Again, because our our, our cav has our men are winning been. the battle. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. Yes, we will. Our cav hasn't even entered the fray yet. Again, this is kind of where the AI is kind of bugging out. Like they're in and out, in and out. Try a charge on these guys in the back. Looks like our woodsmen are going to be absolutely decimated at the, e at the end of this. Arrows flying in, taking out my guys. Oh, that guy just did a spinning attack. I think that was a new animation. Our levy archers are out of arrows, unfortunately. We have really decimated this unit of hunters, though. That's good. Tempted to throw in our archers, but it's just a giant melee in here. I don't think they would be doing much. Our axemen are getting decimated now. They're at 50% killed. Only half the enemy force remains. Whew. Right into our archers. We have a unit of two units of chuddies back here that have been actually hit pretty hard, especially that one. Force in our way through. They're, they're backing our up. Men are winning the battle. If we continue like we this, we will smash the enemy. Can we do a charge in here? Go after him. We got the gateway back. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't get stuck in there. Come on. Why 
you're almost through, guys. Yeah, our woodsmen are going to be completely gone after this. And see, this is one of the reasons why I didn't want to do that big, big army battle is because I'm still getting used to the mod. I know I've made quite a few judgments and error. Errors of judgment, actually, is the way to say that. Like I said, I probably should have had another battering ram come back here and attack from two different sides instead of clogging up just one gateway. My lord, only half of our force remains. Come on. Full rush through. Get to the sides, maybe. Mm, maybe. That seems to seems to have worked. Get a little bit of encirclement. They've kind of evened up the. By the grace of God. Oh, you guys! Come on. Slain the enemy general. Without nice. Troops will lose their will to fight. That'll help. Let's see if we can kind of go round again. Making our way through the one gate. Come on, guys. Come on. Finally, they broke. All right. So they're bringing in their reserves. We're just flying through the gates now. Let's bring our cav up. We're decimating them again. Now that we got through the meat grinder, look at all these bodies. Just a massacre. Do a giant charge. Let's go. You're almost done, man. Just a couple units of Chuddy, couple units of Hunters. Come on, pull back, pull back, pull through, there we are, floodgates have opened, let's go. I didn't realize how much our uh, crossbowmen have gotten killed too. Come on, let's go to the side here with these guys. Pull through. Almost done, men. Come on, charge through, charge, charge, charge. There we are. Eighty-one percent. We have sixty-five lo percent losses, though. That is terrible, terrible, terrible on my part.
Last few units going down now. Guy just by it battling by himself. They're literally just staring at you guys. Come on. Come on. Bath fighting. are 96 percent excellent our men have taken control of the castle yeah hopefully in three and a half minutes these guys will just be dead 99 percent six five four three two are we done this is a yep. clear victory that goes to only men of great virtue and valor Absolutely decimated my own forces, though. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Axemen did amazing. Junior militia did really well. Levy archers, also good. Cav, once they finally got in, did pretty good, too. Got some heals, so that's good. Woodsmen, Axemen, both got some heals. All right. So, not a great battle, but our first battle, and we succeeded, and that's the most important part. So, uh, yeah, uh, hoping to have a decently long campaign. If I keep having battles like that, probably not going to work. But, uh, yeah, glad you guys could join me, and, uh, oh yes, enemy camp, si camp sacked. Defeated. Every time you we win a battle, victory. you do get um, strength. Some Honor money. And victory. Uh, I think we're just going to occupy. But yes, you get some money, so our treasury went up. Enemy routes. Yes. All right, so again, thanks for joining. Um, hopefully, you guys are will enjoy the series. Hopefully, like I said, I'll keep it as a decently long series, and I won't just get completely destroyed in the campaign. But like I said, it not looking great but we we succeeded that that is the important part so uh yeah hope you guys enjoyed and i will see you next time see ya